show captions there, save that, and let me show the screen. Okay, so now let's take a look. 2.1. Yes. Parallel postulate and special angles. Yes. Okay. 78. So we are right, right about, whoops, that's a little bit too yeah. far. Indirect proof. There we go. Somewhere here, right? A little bit, yeah, right there. Yes. Okay. okay. I think we're there. So what? Um, okay. So 16, right? 16. All right. 16. Okay. So Given, we, have to, okay. we have to find X, Y, and, and measure of angle eight, right? So All of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is what I did, right? So, so with a figure, with a figure that they gave us, right? I the measure of angle one. Mm -hmm. Plus measure of angle two is equal to 180 degrees, right? Yes, that's correct. So I, I added 5x plus y plus uh -huh. x plus y equals uh -huh. 180. Right. I, I just simplified it. Okay. And then sounds I, good. Sounds good so far, right? Uh, and uh -huh. then I ended up solving for y, which is y equals 90 minus 4x, right? Oh, okay. So you manipulated. Yeah, yeah. So, good, so I could get a y. Gotcha. And okay. then because what is it? Uh, measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle eight because of the lateral alternate exterior, right? Alternate exterior angle. Yeah. Okay. Right, I have a notes here. I, have to, I, I gotta go back to those every day. Uh huh. Uh huh. So the equal, right? So I basically put in five x plus y is equal to three x plus five y, right? Okay. And then I just simplified for that. And then I ended up with 2x equals 4y. And then I just divided by 2. Okay. X is equal to 2y, right? So I have y and I have my x. Mm -hmm. So what I did here was uh, uh, I simplified. I know I substituted y. X is equal to 2y. So you could then, it, it, there's a couple of ways you could have gone in that case. Yeah, because so I put in so x is equal to y and I substituted y for 90 minus 4x. Okay, and, so let me let me catch up to you. So you okay. have let's see, so you wrote uh 5x plus y. So you worked with 5x plus y plus 3x plus y. 3x plus y. Equals 180. Is equal to 180. And then you you simplified that. So that's 8x plus 2y is equal to 180, right? Yes, I got that, yes. And then you have, now you said you solved for y. Is that what you I did? Yeah, I subtracted 8x from both sides. I put x. Okay. Right. So 2y is equal to um, negative 8x or 180 minus 8x, depending yeah. on how you yeah, wrote the it. One. The second one, yes. And then, and then you then... divided by two. Yes, and that's how I got my y. Yes. So yes. you get y equals, now that would give you negative 4x plus 90, right? 90 yes. minus 4x. Okay. Yes. I agree. And, and then, then you said two and one and eight. Two, one and eight are. Um, Alternate exterior. Angle. Alternate exterior. Okay. So they're congruent, right? Yes. So, so I, I put 5x, because measure of angle 1 is 5x, 5X plus y. Plus y. Uh -huh. I equaled it to measure of angle 8, 3x plus 5y. 3x plus, uh-huh. Okay. And then, did now did you uh, simplify or did you make a substitution from here? No, I simplified. I, I simplified for x, I guess. Okay, so you you moved everything over. Is that what yeah, you did? I, yeah, I moved y to the right and x to the left. Gotcha. So that would mean five x minus three x is two x, right? Yes. And then you have two x is equal to four y, right? Yes, yes. And then were you here now? Here did you make a substitution, or did you go ahead and 
So which variable did you solve for in this equation? So 2x is equal to 4y. I divided by 2 after okay. that. Okay. So yeah. x is equal to 2y. Okay. Right? Yes. Okay. So, so, so I'll, now I'll... you have x is equal to 2y and you have y is equal to negative 4x plus 9 or 90 minus 4x, right? Yes. Yes. So I use You're doing uh, great so far. So yeah. Now okay. What? Cool. Cool. Because I was on this for like, like cool 20, 30 minutes. Because I, I I couldn't really figure it out too good, but I'm I'm that's good. So I substituted. I I use the formula x is equal to two y, uh -huh. and I substituted the y. So it gives okay. me x is equal to two parentheses ninety minus four x close parentheses. X is equal to okay. Wait a second. Y is equal to nine. Well, y is equal to ninety minus four x. Right. Uh -huh. Yes. And then you said you're going to make a substitution for X. So in this case, based on what you have here, now there's different ways of doing it, uh -huh. but based on what you've written here, um, you have Y is equal to 90 minus 4X, right? Yes. And then you have Y um x is equal to 2y right yes, yes so here i think rather than doing a whole other gymnastic why don't you just substitute you have why don't you get this in terms of um y so here you can just take this first equation here this equation 1 here and you can say y is equal to 90 minus now 4x this is 4 right and then your x is 2y so right. you could just drop this in you see uh -huh. it's not the only way to do it but mm -hmm. i think that would be more direct for you. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did it the other way, yeah. You could you could make a substitution uh -huh. for, um, for the Y, but then you'd have Y is equal to one half X. Or you could, you could, the other thing you could do is you could say, you could work with X is equal to two Y and you could write X is equal to, Two times ninety minus that's 4X. that's a, that's the way I went. Yeah, you went with that one. Yeah. Either way is okay. Okay. Um, but you have to solve for now. You don't need to do both of these at this point because once you get one of these right, uh -huh. then you can um you can go back and solve for the expressions, or you can put it in the other variable. But here you're going to get, assuming that you go with the one on my right, you'll get X is equal to 2 times 90 is 180 minus 2 times negative 4X is negative 8X. Are you with me there? Yeah, just one minus I'm a, you gave it two. I, I see that. Thank you for, okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to add 8X to both sides, right? Yeah. So I'm going to have x plus 8x this is going to be i'll write this down mm -hmm. x plus 8x is equal to 180 minus 8x plus 8x so now i've got 9x 9x is equal to 180 180 and therefore x if I divide by nine, X is equal to 20. 20, yes. And if, since I've so conveniently done this, you could plug this back in here, but it's most convenient to plug it in the X is equal to two Y category. So if, if you have X is equal to two Y, then you have, since X is equal to two Y, then you have 20 
is equal to 2y, right? And therefore, 10 is equal y. to y. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got that, yes. So you're doing a good job there. That one was a little bit... Um, a little bit more involved than some of them are but yeah that one i can see how that one would have yeah because the thing is that because okay so I, i'm because the thing is that like when it comes to like running the numbers that's i find that kind of easy mm -hmm. but what i'm trying what, what i find difficult is uh figuring out which how to do it you know what i mean because because okay because because uh, uh, there's different ways like uh can, can you go back to a little thing? It's a little formula. So it's a little, um, the textbook. The textbook, sure. Yeah, yeah. You mean the different rules for the angles? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, because, because, uh, so, so I, okay, so I ended up going with measure of angle one plus measure of angle two is equal to 180, right? Uh -huh. But, but, uh, in the beginning, I was I was kind of like, okay, so let's look for the alternate exterior angles, or let's look for the you know course whatever corresponding. Oh, angle, okay. You know, stuff like that, but then I ended up going with the one eighty. Um, my question is like, how do we know which I guess which way to go, which route to take? In a okay, in a situation like this, and that's a valid question. In a situation like this, there may be more than one way to do it, and what I tell students is go with whatever is going to work as long as it's mathematically correct because there are a lot of relationships there yeah because yeah um yeah because i mean I, I i've been kind of taking notes and i see there's like um the, the interior angles you know the alternate right. exterior and you know there's like a whole bunch of different ways i've made notes of which one's right. kind of so really so tricky. what i would suggest is you you're doing the right thing you you need to know what alternate exterior angles are you need to know what corresponding angles are. You need to know what um, same side interior angles mean. You need to know all of those terms, right? I got, I got, I got these. Like I wrote them down and everything. It just, it just, yeah. I, I just sometimes I don't know which because for fifteen it took. I I said I got fifteen right as well. It just, it takes me a while to know which which route to take well okay so one of the things i would do in terms of of kind of going through the problem is mm -hmm. i would and i don't know if you've been doing this but when i do it i actually mark um like if i'm trying to do the problem i'll mark it so like this says given transversal k you have the measure of three and six. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look at this and I'm going to say, okay, well, here's the measure of angle three, right? No. Three is over here and six is here, right? No. So what kind of angles did they give me? Uh, the alternate interior angles, right? They're alternate interior angles. So uh -huh. I know I'm going to be working with that somehow. Okay. I, I may not know what I'm going to do with that, but that's what I'm given. So I have to work with that. Those are alternate interior angles, and I know those <laughs> are congruent. So then I'm going to say, okay, now they want me to do something with the measure of angle four. Hmm. Okay, well, the measure of angle four right here is um is in a linear pair with the um, other angle over here so mm -hmm. i i would personally set the met these two alternate interior angles equal and then i would say that the measure of the measure of this angle angle three mm -hmm right here let me use the spotlight the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four is 180. okay you see where i'm going with that or not yeah but it's because on, on question number 16 um it doesn't give us uh... right so here okay so when i'm doing this one 
uh -huh. when I'm doing 16, my if I was going to employ kind of a similar approach for that, what I would do is I would say, okay, well, they gave me one and two, just like you did. They gave me one and two. Those are um, a linear pair that makes 180, right? Uh -huh. And then they gave me two and eight. Now, instead of looking at it like you did, one and now uh, there's nothing wrong with looking at it the way you did. Uh -huh. But what I saw was I have exterior angle, right? I uh -huh. have exterior angles on the same side. Two and eight is what I saw. Okay. Now it doesn't matter. So what, but what am I trying to get more importantly? I'm trying to get X and Y and the measure of angle eight. So since I don't know the measure of angle eight, I'm going to try and look for, and you had a choice. You could either use the measure of angle one or you could use um, you could use the measure of angle two, depending on what you wanted to deal with. Angle two plus angle eight equals 180 as well, right? Two <laughs> and eight are alternate exterior angles. I mean, I'm sorry, they're same side exterior angles. Same side exterior. Uh, same side exterior, okay. And then they, they're equal to 180, right? Same side exterior angles are, um, I believe they're, so let me check it, because that one is the one that I have trouble remembering. Mm -hmm. Let me let me look at it so I don't lie to you, because that would be bad. <laughs> uh, let me take a look at this here. Two pair of the corresponding angles. I know we had some same side. Let me check this. Give me a second to check that. I believe they're congruent, yes, but let me verify that before I. Um, now there are, what are they called? Supplementary angles, right? Supplementary means they add up to. 180. Yes. Yeah, same side exterior angles are supplementary as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. So you, either way. Okay. Yeah, like little things like that. I'm trying to figure out how to understand that. But that's, but that's what, it, it just depends on what you saw. The fact that you saw that is not a problem. It just, because you were solving for two variables, you had to have two equations. Okay. So, and anytime you have to have two equations, that takes a little bit more. Um, Brain power. Takes a little bit more work. And yeah. this one was, this one did kind of throw the whole thing at you. Like it was pretty much, if you can do this problem, you can probably do just about any problem that relates to a transversal itself. Yeah. But, but I would I would say rather than in, in a situation like that, and I usually counsel like, do look at the diagram and make sure you can identify. But I do say, look at what they've given you and and work from the basis of that um mm -hmm. rather than trying to sort of read into the diagram look at what they've given you first and ask yourself how the things they've given you are related okay and then look for what you want that's probably a shorter approach than than trying to identify all of the relationships that you can okay so for instance real quick on number 17 because uh sure. I could just solve it later on. Sure, no so, problem. Because it asks it asks us for x, y, and measure of angle seven, right? Okay. Give... Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I, I have it up here. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I, no. I'm I'm right there with you. I just want to make sure that I'm seventeen. All right. Seventeen, yeah. So <clears throat> the way the diagram is, uh, x is uh, I guess a uh, thing, the picture image. One in three. 
right? So they've yeah. given you, it looks like on 17, they've given you three, five, and six. So I could just set up okay. to find to find either X or Y. I could just set up three measure of angle three equal to the measure of angle six, right? Right. Three and six are equal. And then five and six are a supplementary, right? Supplementary pair. Now you have a choice between because you want to get angle seven right yeah. so you could think of five and seven as being a linear pair or you could think of six as being congruent to seven yeah that's what i was thinking about too like solve for six and that just gives me seven yeah okay so so again again you're you're having the right thoughts like that's but I would say, like I said, start from the givens rather than starting from the diagram. Okay. In this case. Yeah, just, yeah, just, I'm just trying to figure, yeah, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, because I'm just trying to figure out how, how, to, which way to do it. But I kind of, I kind of feel like if I understand it a little bit more now. That's it, when, when, you seem that's... to understand it really well. It probably feels like you're floundering around a bit, but you seem to understand it really well yeah I'm, I'm yeah i i, I think so yeah <laughs> i think so and um okay cool then now i'll just solve that i saw that right now um and then since we're already here i haven't checked out 24 you know what because i know i know i had troubles with one what was it 15? take take time there's no need to rush i mean unless you're in a hurry i have no All right. i have no reason to hurry right now so <laughs> No, I have I have a lot of stuff to do today. Yeah, 24, 24 is a little bit of a um 24 okay. is a little bit of a, a okay, an icky one. 12. 12? 12, yeah. Um well, all right. I solved it and I but I don't I'm not too exactly sure exactly how, right? Okay. Well, let's take a look at it really quick. So it says that A D is parallel to BC, so the left and the right side are parallel, and AB is parallel to DC, which means the top and the bottom are parallel. So we basically have the uh, uh, what looks like a rectangle, but we definitely have a parallelogram going on here. A little bit right? of a line, yeah. Yes. But but they're going to um, throw a curveball at you when they tell you that the measure of angle A is ninety two. So this angle here, let me spotlight it. This angle here is 92 degrees, uh -huh. right? So that means- um, And we want to find the measures of the rest of them. B, C, well, D, yeah. what happens is that you've created, you've got two sets of transversals. So you've really got, if you, and here's a trick, and I'm sure you've discovered it, but if you haven't, this is a handy trick. What you can do is extend, these lines so that you can see it. So here's your, now we're gonna be concerned about this transversal up at the top, okay? So you, now we know that this angle, this angle down here we know is 92 degrees. So it, we know what this angle down here is. So now it makes, you can think about what is the relationship with say this angle here in black, right? Well, this, this red one that they gave you and this black one, they're on the same side of that transversal, right? Okay. They're on the same side of this transversal that I drew, aren't they? And yes. so that means that they are, um, yeah, they're supplementary to each other. So if I want to find the black one, then I'm going to take 180 minus 92. Okay. Right. So, okay. I, okay. So I, I did it. So we both end up with the same answer, but the way that I did it, um, I just saw it as angle A was congruent to angle C. You could, yeah, that's yeah. 
possible okay. as well. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. Yeah, because that's what I did. I um I added those two up, right? Yeah. And then and the reason that works is for um there's a couple of properties that lead into that, but you essentially have what we call a parallelogram. It's not a rectangle, but it's a parallelogram. Mm -hmm. And the opposite angles, which is what you just described, are in fact congruent to each other. Oh. So, but you can show that through the, the so that works. Okay. Yeah. Cause that, that, okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, I, I feel like I'm going to do that. Do, do it your way next time. Cause, uh, because I mean, I, well, I that was just based on, I just used that particular one because that happened to be what you saw. Okay. The last time when, when you were doing it, that's what you used. So I, but yeah, that's also legal. Okay. 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 So now that's a different way. Yeah. Cause the way I did it, I, I added them up in 92, 92, it came out to 184. And I, I know the inside of a, uh, I guess, I guess uh, of a square, a rectangle. Of a well, keep in yeah. mind this is not technically a rectangle because yeah. these are not ninety. It is a quadrilateral, right? Quadrilateral. You'll learn that rule later, but yes, that's true. Okay, the yeah, inside is three hundred sixty degrees, right? Very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just I just did the math: three hundred sixty minus one eighty four. Very good, in but the, in terms yeah. of but in terms of what you had to work with here. Mm -hmm. If you were just working with the parallel conjectures, that's how I would suggest either either A and D or A and B. And then so I that you were on the same side of a transversal somehow. Okay. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like I got I got the answer. And just yeah. I just don't know. I don't, I'm not too sure exactly how. Yeah. You know? Well, what you actually did was. This this is something that when we get to the chapter, because it sounds like you you know some geometry already. Well, just from high school. I my first well, hey, that school. counts. Yeah. <laughs> that counts. Where, wherever it came from, uh -huh. prior exposure counts. What you did was you used what you knew about what we call quadrilaterals, being that the sum of those angles was 360. 360. And you probably, even though if you didn't know the term, you had a parallelogram because you had two sets of parallel sides here that was given. And what we call opposite angles, which, which is what you just quoted, A and C. Opposite mm -hmm. angles of a parallelogram are congruent. They're equal to each other. But the reason that they're equal to each other, and we can, you'll be able to prove this a little later when we get a little further into the chapter, you can use those conjectures about uh, same side interior angles that we just saw to prove that your opposite angles are congruent. Okay. You haven't quite, I, I think the proofs come in, in 2.2 and 2.3. Okay. So probably next week, but you're, you're definitely, <laughs> on it somewhere somewhere in there okay yeah you're doing good okay 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 all right cool it's all the 17 then uh, yeah let's just just check out number 24 because i saw it i 24. saw it kinda... yeah 24 has a little a little nuance in there that it's interesting yeah can be um there's a reason that hint is there and that hint is actually helpful if you know how to use it um, given AB is parallel to DE. So AB, this exterior line here, is parallel to DE on this side, okay? And the measure of angle BAC is 42. So BAC, so we're looking at this angle here. BAC, this one, they give you, right? And they also give you the measure of EDC, which is this one, okay? Now, they give you those two angles, okay? 
And then they want you to find the measure of the one in the middle. They want you to find this angle. ACD. Right here. Now, and you're like, well, how am I supposed to? And so here it says, hint, there's a line through AC that's parallel to both AB and DE. So what they're telling you is to go ahead and draw, you don't have to, I mean, some people actually draw, but they're actually telling you to go ahead and draw this line so that you can see that you have, there's a, there's a congruent angle, right? You have a congruent angle up here. So if you draw the line through the curve, you can see that there's an angle there, right? And then you have another transversal that's forming, right? So think about what this angle does to this one and what the three of them have to add up to. Because you're looking for the total. So what you want to think about is what is what is this little piece of this angle and this little piece of this angle. It doesn't split it exactly in half because these are not exactly the same. This is 42 down here. This is 54 here, but what is this angle up in here? Well, this angle up in here, what, what is this transversal doing? This transversal that I drew in the middle of it, let me erase it's, that uh, temporarily. It's dissecting it. Well, yeah, it, it's going through it, but what kind of angle does it create? For this side, see what happens is it you have an alternate interior angle there. So this dot, this dot here, right? Mm. And this, not the whole dot in the center, but the half of the angle. So let me see if I can draw this on the screen for you. Because that's that's what's hard to see when you when you do this. We have a we have a line, let's see. <coughs> we have a line here, right? <laughs> and then we have a ray. I'll draw this in a different color. Here. We have a, a, a line here, right? And then we have another line here. something like that. And then we have, this is not a perfect representation of that diagram, but it'll do. So you have this M looking thing, right? Well, it turns out that if you draw, whoops, that I didn't mean to draw, let me undo that. So if I draw this line here and make another, transversal through here, right? Turns out that this angle right here, which we have, is congruent to this piece from the green to the red. So this angle here. Oh. Is congruent to this angle here. Hold on, let me draw a little picture. Do you see why? Do you see the alternate interior angle or not? Yeah, I'm seeing it now, yeah. I am seeing it now. Okay. Actually. Remember, this one is given to you. This one here, I think it's 42, isn't it? Is that uh, what they give you? Is this one BAC 42? Is, yeah, BAC is 42. Yeah, that one's 42. This one's 42, right? That means this piece is 42, not the whole middle angle, but this piece of it is 42 degrees. Now, this other angle here 
is 54, right? Yes. Now, again, this creates another alternate, this creates another alternate interior angle over here with, let me use this color. It, it's hard to see it. Sometimes students have a really hard time seeing this part. This is usually once for some reason, one side or the other happens to be easier to see for some people. I, I don't know why, but I know that was the case for me for a long time. But this, this purple angle right here, that is an alternate interior angle. 54. To 54, right? <laughs> so then this piece here, now remember they want the measure of, oops, they want the measure of the angle in the middle, right? So now we're going to take the 42 and the 54. Add them up. And add them up. So we have 42 plus 54. And that's going to give us 96. 96. OK, I kind of get it now. But yeah, that that the hint there was it's just seeing the um the alternate interior angle that that is just uh, yeah, I see it now. Yeah, because I, I would have not known. Okay. Okay, I see I see it, I see it. So 25 is basically almost let's see, let's go back. 25? Yeah. Um, AC plus CD is 93. 25. Given hint CX. Okay, yeah. So here, okay, so we're given the same picture. Let's see what they give us. The measure of BAC. Okay, so that, okay, the elbow of the M, if you will. And then the measure of CDE. CDE is 90. Okay. So if we add up the two elbows, we get 93, it says. And it says that we want to find, okay. So in this case, in this case, we know that we have two angles that add up to 93, right? Mm -hmm. But we need to know the measure of the angle in the middle of the um, the measure of BAC plus the measure of CD. CDE is um, 93 mm -hmm. degrees. We want to find the measure of the angle up top. So in this case, what we're looking at is we don't know So we know that this adds up not to 96, but to 93. I'll redraw it again here. This is, um, and it works on a very similar kind of premise as before. So we have our angle, our line, I should say, and then our angle here, right? And then we have our bend here. And then we have another elbow here. And basically right now we're looking at, instead of looking at the individual um, pieces, we're looking at the fact that this plus this, I know, right? So yeah. you could you could make a case for the fact that you don't know. Um, in this case, I would probably introduce a variable. So I would say, well, let's draw, let's do our famous line in the middle of this. There's our line in the middle. 
right? And we don't know what this is, so I'm gonna call this angle X. Let me move it over, right? Um, and then call this angle Y. So it's kind of like reversing what we did the first time, right? Uh -huh. So you've got, or you could call this, you know, MCD minus whatever. I mean, I don't know how many uh, names you want to introduce, but essentially, you know that these two angles add up to 93. So this, this angle here has to match this bend, right? But mm -hmm. if this angle, if I call this angle, say, I know that this angle and this angle are congruent. So this is also X, right? And this is also Y down here, right? Mm -hmm. So now I can say that X plus Y is 93 degrees. Wouldn't that have to be true? Because yes. here they've given me, see what they've done here, Think about what we did. We had to take these two and we had to add them up to get the middle angle, uh -huh. right? So what they've done here is they've given you the sum, right? So essentially they've given you this middle piece. The answer because they're, the way they have it is they're, no matter how you see it, those angles are, uh, are the same. There, because this angle here, yeah, this is actually easier, but it's probably harder to see. This angle here, the one marked in black right here, is an alternate interior angle to this angle here. So these are both X's, right? For the same reason that in this equation, the green angles were both 42, weren't they? Yes. See, what they did here was they gave us, instead of giving us the individual angle, instead of giving us 42 and 54, they gave you the sum, right? So this angle plus this angle was 96. That means because of the way this is constructed, Okay, that this middle angle, the one in red, the one marked with the red sides, if you will, right, is the sum of those two. Okay. Just because these two black lines are parallel to each other. So when you go to this figure here, and they've given you the sum of, let me get rid of these X's temporarily. When they've given you the sum of these two, right? Because they did that. They told you the sum. They didn't tell you the individual angles. They told you the sum, right? Yeah. Because of the way this is, because of the same logic that we used before, we don't know what this individual, we don't know if this, this could be 90 and this could be three degrees, it probably isn't, but you know, it, mm -hmm. the sum is 93, right? That's the same as the measure of this angle in the middle, this, this angle here. Because, because they're parallel and that makes them alternate interior angles. Because these lines are parallel, yeah, right, okay. and this black line here is parallel to each of these two, right? Okay. What that creates 
imagine, let me just draw, let's see if this helps you. Let me just draw half of this. So I have, here's my side M, right? And then here's my bend. Let me use purple for that. My bend is purple, right? Mm -hmm. So I have this, right? Now, if I want to draw an alternate interior angle to this, so I have an angle hanging out, this broken flagpole, if you will, right? I want to create an alternate, an interior angle that's on the opposite side to this. I need a transversal to do that, don't I? Because right now I just have this left side, right? So, so what, I'm going to... What's a transversal? A transversal is that line that crosses two other parallel lines. See, I've got this line hanging here, right? Do okay. I have a second in, in the drawing at the bottom, right? I don't have a second parallel line, do I? Mm, no. No, but I'm going to draw it in. Okay. So here's my second parallel line. This is the line that they told you to draw as a hint. Yes. And this is the reason why. Here's your second parallel line in red, right? Now that purple line that you see, I'm gonna extend it a bit. The purple line that you see functions as what we call a transversal. It's a line or a segment that crosses, let me extend it a bit. There's my line. That means that this purple line is a transversal. It's a line that goes across two other parallel lines, and creates angles, okay? That's what a transversal is. When okay. two parallel lines, in this case, the red one and the black one, are cut or intersected by a transversal, that is a line that intersects the two of them, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So here's my one angle that they gave me, right? Now the other altern the other interior angle is the one between the parallel lines. So it would be up here and it would be on the other side of this purple line. Okay. So here's my purple line. It's below it. The other side of it is over here, right? And it's on the opposite side. This is my alternate interior. What do you notice? It's this line, it's this angle right here. So these are both X, which we knew, right? These are both X. So mm -hmm. they've given you the sum of that. Okay. So, okay, so going with that information, right? Let's go mm -hmm. over to 27, because that's basically what they ask. Sure. Let's go. See what happens. Uh, 27. All right. Let's see. Here's where we are. Okay. So it says in triangle ABC. All right. So they gave it to me. Uh -huh. uh, line T. So li the line at the top that's dotted. Line T is drawn through vertex A. Okay. Right there in such a way that T is parallel to BC. So that's a long-winded way of saying we drew a triangle. Mm -hmm. we, we drew a line through the top vertex. It's called a vertex, the top vertex. We drew a dotted line through there. And the top dotted line that we drew is parallel to the base of the mm -hmm. triangle, the bottom. Uh-huh. Now, what that means for you, 
in terms of transversals, since this is a new word, I'm gonna emphasize this a bit. Um, yeah, I made a note on it right here, my notes. This, this line that they drew going through the vertex A and this base is now parallel. Mm -hmm. They are parallel to each other. That makes AC, this line here. Transversal. A transversal, potentially. And A, B, a transverse, mm -hmm. depending on which one we need. Okay. okay. But they are both potentially transversals Transversal. of this, of these two parallel lines. Okay. So, all right, we got all that. So what is the question? Which pairs of angles are okay. congruent? Well. Five and three, four and two, right? Five and three, right. Five and three, four and two. Uh-huh. Very good. Since because they don't give us any more angles, it can't we kind of can't do more, right? Well, those are the alternate interior, right? Five and mm -hmm. three, four and two, and those are the ones that are numbered. And we don't know anything about two and three, right? Uh -huh. Um, and the same side interior angles, which are gonna be one and two, are gonna be um are going to end up being, these are the same side interior. They're uh, going to end up being supplementary when you have the transversal area, but we don't have the angle up there. Okay. Right. Now, what is the sum of angle one here, angle four here, and angle five? Yeah, those are all supplementary as well. They add up to 180. Yeah, in this case, they're supplementary. It's asking you what is the sum. So that would be 180. 180. Right. Mm -hmm. And then because of the triangle for letter C, it's it's 180, right? What is the sum of the measures of the angles? Yeah. So this is another, yeah, this is another version. The sum of the measures of the angles in a triangle is 180. So a little bit of a different reason but it still holds yeah okay okay so yeah now, now i kind of do get it a little bit with uh yeah because uh yeah i would have not solved 24 but i i get it now with the uh uh alternate interior angles i'm kind of getting it now the the one thing that i will show you visually sometimes this helps if it doesn't help you that's fine feel free to discard it but it might help you is when you're looking at when you're looking at a transversal sometimes and it's probably easier I'm going to draw a transversal this way as well we have another pair but I'm going to draw one going let's say I have this parallel line and this line here right and I'm going to draw we'll use red since red is our favorite color right now now, one thing that sometimes students um, have seen that some of them like is that alternate interior angles make, if you look, you have the letter Z. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here we have a letter Z. It's, a, it's elongated, but it's a letter Z essentially, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the crooks in the letter Z right here mm -hmm. and right here are, you can make those angles are congruent. Those are alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles make a letter Z and the the backbone of the Z when I draw it, essentially what you've done when you draw letter Z, you, you'll never look at writing the letter Z the same again, because if you draw it properly, this top is parallel to the bottom and this slanted line forms a transversal there. So these angles should be equal, whoops those angles should be equal because 
they are alternate interior angle. Yeah. Okay. So some people, and it's it's easier to see on this picture, but the Z is slanted. If you look here, you can see that right here, okay, there's my one, and here's my other crook right here, this angle. Mm -hmm. This angle here, let me select, uh, there we go. This angle here is the same. And I don't know why it's not cooperating right now. Okay, let me do this like this. You gonna let me draw or are you gonna make my life miserable? <clears throat> I think it wants to make my life a little miserable right now. <laughs> Um, but this angle is congruent to, there it is. That's what I wanted you to do. This angle is congruent to that one. It doesn't look like it in the picture, but they should be, okay? Because here's the Z. Mm -hmm. This. This essentially has two Z's. One here, so that this angle is congruent to X. And then another one coming this way. Where this angle is congruent to this Y. Uh, I get it. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I I get it. Good job. All right. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I just have to finish this and submit it, but I I I get it. Nice going. Nice yeah. to see you, Juan. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're the first student that I've seen from the geometry class. I was starting to think that. Oh no! Kidding. I didn't know, but that yeah, I was like, let me make an announcement because I haven't oh, seen anybody. No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't work today. Today was my day off. Oh, gotcha. So, okay. You know what? I got that little announcement. I was like, oh, cool. I'm glad it fits. It fits my schedule. Yeah, and if um, if you guys need, I mean, if that turns out to be the case, you can always email me. Like, if you need some help, we're we're open to that. Just email me and be like, hey, are you free to me? Because I have um. A statistics class that also meets but if it's the only night that you can come i can put you in there it's not a problem figure something out so yeah so if you need help just let us know i uh can you give me your student number so i can give you credit for coming uh one twenty nineteen eighteen one twenty nineteen eighteen okay one twenty it's an interesting student number. It's very easy to remember. <laughs> yeah, very, you have some interesting numbers there. Like, I started I started going to Cerritos College like 10 years ago and I stopped gotcha. showing up. And I came mm. back and I still remembered it. It's just so easy. Gotcha. Well, hey, you know, I I was a student at Cerritos before I started working here. And I I was a student so long ago that my original student number has only six digits. So it actually has a zero in front of it. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. That's so I have a six digit student number. Oh, that's funny. And, that's and so I always have to now it's getting they're almost up to eight digits for some of them. No, no so kidding. now pretty soon, I think they're going to have me put two leading zeros in front of it. No, oh, that's going to be a fun time. So hey, quick question. though. Yes, sir. I'm uh, maybe I'm, I'm remembering wrong because I remember because I, I was, I guess, for the orientation, I, mm -hmm. we met you, you and Professor Nick Dell and I think a couple other people, right? Yeah, I, I was there. And uh, the thing is that I could, like I guess I, I could have remembered it wrong, but I, I kind of heard that they're going to post up the test on a Thursday and be due Friday. Yeah. So it normally you have 24 hours to turn it in. Um. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. I don't want to cut oh. you off. 
No, no, because oh, because because okay, so because I thought we we're gonna get it Thursday at I guess twelve a.m. and submitted Friday eleven fifty nine p.m. Mm-hmm. It's usually um, yeah. So it's usually you have about a twenty four hour period to work on the exam. Okay. So it, if you saw something different, because I no. know um one of the stat students was saying that she had um she had put an announcement out yesterday. And she, it was meant for her students in person. And it was only, I think, a 12 hour block. Uh -huh. um, and she corrected that. So, but it should be a 24 hour, roughly, maybe 23, but it should be a 24 hour period. Okay. 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 Then, yeah. Cause, okay. Cause I thought it was going to be, I get up Thursday. No, I'm going to turn it in the next day. Is Thursday. that an issue? Is that an issue with your um, work schedule or? Well, it just it's it's a very inconsistent hours because I am um, so okay. So I work. I, I'm a I'm a mailman. I'm a letter carrier. Oh, gotcha. And the thing is that let's say because lately it has not been good because a lot of people call off. So if people call mm -hmm. off, like, hey man, you have to carry your route and half of another route. Come and do right. Yeah. So so I mean, I'll I'll figure something out if I'll talk to my boss. But I came out. Well, if you. The other thing too, and I um, and you you know this because you're on top of it. But the other thing too is, like I said, if you need, if you want somebody to like look it over and stuff like that, if you want to see me, just shoot me a message, uh, or okay. um, or you know, let me know because, like I said, the um, the stats class normally meets, um after you guys and they meet in the evening twice a week so i have morning times for them and i have evening times for them and so if the evening would work better for you then i can i can put you it wouldn't be a problem to like put you in a breakout room in that meeting or something like mm -hmm. that um, okay, well, if, we have we have one we have one scheduled day after in the week it's a, it's we're on a rotating schedule mm -hmm. so next week is gonna be thursday yeah and, so and, and uh if, if i do have any questions uh you, you guys meet pretty much every day if... yeah i mean now the thing is to know about next week and that's why like i said with the four-day weekend uh -huh. um the the school won't be holding meetings on the the president's day holiday so they we won't be holding meetings this coming Friday, the weekend, or Monday. So our next meeting is on Tuesday. But if I'm going to sneak into my email and I'm going to look and make sure that you guys don't. But next week when you guys take the, because you're going to take the quiz on this tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, yeah. So you'll have time to, if if you need me, I will I will go in and I will look at it. So um you can send me a message you could send a message to my email you could send a message to canvas but i'll be looking to see if that's um but that's okay. why we have today i have like i think six hours of meetings i have another meeting after this actually that i that i'm going to um be into so you know it it works out but yeah okay. if something happens let us know Okay. And um and thank you for coming by. Thank you for not making this as lonely as it has been. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, thank you for helping me out. I I feel like the little the information that I that I learned is pretty crucial to what I need. Yeah, no, you you definitely have picked up the right the right information for sure. Okay. I, I think you have more than enough information to handle the quiz. The quiz okay. the quizzes are normally designed to look very similar to the homework and the slides. So if you're doing this well on the homework, you the, okay. the, the quiz should not tax you too much. Okay. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right, Juan, take care. Thank you, appreciate it. Take care now. Okay, bye. Bye.